I know Iris said the rule is not to make any statement before the question, but do you mind if I just uh, very briefly ask, say a few seconds? Just ask the question. We know the cost of uh, school exclusions, both socially and economically. Um, and I'm just asking the question of what will the candidates do to address the issue of high school exclusions, and I know Adrian very briefly actually mentioned the word colorblind, but I agree with um, Sir Peter Salisbury. There is an institutional racism in any, anywhere in the world. And I think we have to understand that some school exclusion is among the black boys, and the racial uh, minority communities is very high, and that is the term again, Pamela mentioned, over-represented in, in, in many alternative provisions. And I'm wondering whether the candidates will address those issues, uh, particularly those who have educational backgrounds and being a teacher. Thank you. Okay, can we start with Sir Peter? Yeah, I'd be happy to talk about that because uh, I think that that's been probably, you know, is, is directed to, towards me because I was a teacher. Uh, I've worked in schools uh, across the city, dealt first hand with sort of issues that uh, we've got here uh, about the uh, uh, extent to which uh, certain pupils uh, are much more liable to find themselves excluded than others. And it does directly relate to the colour of their skin. It's, it's here today as much as it was when I was a teacher, which isn't that many years ago. Um, but, and it is a but, I'm actually quite proud of the fact that uh, over the last four years, we have very significantly reduced the numbers involved. We're not there yet. And it's a major task because we've got 100 on schools across this city. Uh, and unlike the old days where uh, you know, the, the council sort of said to the school, this is the way it'll be done, and that was the way it had to be done, uh, we're now in a situation where our schools have got a very significant degree of independence. We have a responsibility to oversee how they're performing, and this is a part of that. And uh, I am concerned that in the past we haven't been good enough at doing it. I think we are getting there, but there is still a lot to be done because it is undoubtedly the case that certain young people, particularly black kids, particularly boys, are much more likely to get excluded than others, and that is an excuse. Can I just add to that? Yeah. Well, we're we're to to Michael, Michael. Yes. Quickly. I have challenge Sir Peter Salzberg about this because. I know you said the uh, solution reduced in the last four years, right. but children are physically excluded because they go to another school. So they call it manage move, and I think you need to be very clear. Right? But, but the thing is, the children are still excluded, and they, some of them ended up actually in uh, privately schooling or homeschooling, which is a very, very significant you know, uh, consequences in terms of social and economic and everything. So we need to look at the reality. And I'm sure that if anyone has become a, a, a mayor, we need that to be actually looked at very, very deeper. And also consulting those communities who actually have the experience and actually front lines. Thank you. If I can just put very briefly, I agree entirely. I mean, you know, this isn't an issue that's been solved. It's a, it's a wider issue than Leicester, but it's one that obviously is particularly acute for us in Leicester. We're not there yet. Uh, I think we need to uh, find out why these kids uh, are being excluded, what, what they're doing uh, to get themselves excluded, or what the teachers are doing to exclude them. Um, as I said earlier, I, when I was a kid, uh, there's a lot, a lot of kids who weren't interested in school and they used to get into trouble. Uh, I think if we were able to offer them uh, alternatives to sort of a standard normal education that we foist on everybody, regardless of their interests or abilities, we may get a lower uh, incidence of uh, uh, exclusion. Um, I think we need uh, more vocational training. You can't force, once someone gets to the age of 30, 40, 50, you can't force them to learn. You might physically take them to school, but you can't force them to learn maths or geography or history. You have to ask them, what are your interests? What, do you, what are your uh, uh, hopes and aspirations in life? Uh, and if it doesn't lie in the academic arena, you have to give them an alternative. Don't force everybody to have the same education. Give them another alternative. Thanks. Uh, Tim? I think that um, 
Aptar, Aptar is right, I think that providing an alternative is important. Um, I also think that what's in, important is to actually address the fact that this does seem like it, it's a top-down thing with, with, with teachers very much in, of that institutional racism being there from, from a teacher level. Um, so what I'd do is I'd encourage um, local teachers to attend um, seminars, um, a variety of different kind of seminars on, uh, on promoting um, well, racial equality, on, on tolerance, etc. So I just think that I, really I, I want to know, personally I would like to know um, what, what you would recommend um, to, uh, as to how we could combat this. And again, I keep bringing back the idea of this, uh, of this, of this application, this website, to, for, for local, well, for regular referendums, because of the fact that I'm not going to sit here and claim like I know everything, because I don't. All of you know that you know your <laughs> your local communities and the issues that um, you know that, that mean a lot to you. And I just think that that's why it's important to be able to empower people like you to be able to actually. Um, to, well, to make suggestions and, uh, and, and be heard. Thank you. Adrian? The important thing about education is that the youngsters are engaged and they believe that there is a reason for why they're being educated and they want to be educated. And if we're trying to give them the wrong subjects, if we're pushing them in the wrong direction, they're never going to engage. And that's what we need to do. We need to find teachers that will engage these youngsters uh, and make sure they want to stay in school. If they want to stay in school, they're not going to be the ones that are excluded. And the problem that we have, and I've seen it often, very, very often, is that exclusion is used far too quickly. Instead of being a very last resort, it's used as a first resort because sometimes um, the, the classroom isn't controlled as well as it ought to be. Um, to, to take Tim's point, we need to make sure that the teachers and the teaching assistants are able to engage in the staff, uh, engage in the students, engage in the pupils, so that the pupils want to be there and they won't play up and they won't need to be excluded. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> you've expressed the situation that's now. Um, what I would like to know from a school setting is the circumstances around the exclusion of every child and then identify if there's a point of discrimination that is clearly over the over representation of one group of people because this is complex and you've heard different, different answers from the candidates it is, it's complex it's a child who's maybe 14 it's a child of aspiration or disengagement. It's a child that may have already experienced discrimination or wherever they come from. There's a whole bag in, in there. So you need to know the circumstances around each, each of those exclusions and identify the trend and the cause. And then treat the cause. But do it quickly. Because it sounds to me from your question, this has been going on and on and on and on. And it's not been stopped. I would be concerned if this is happening in schools, which should be applying what has just been described, and I know of the Quality Act within the school. So, children have authority figures. How are those authority figures treating the children? And on what basis are they treating them? So, the school inspectors should be identifying and ensuring that the Equality Act is enforced in each of those schools, and that would be Ofsted. I've given you some thoughts, but clearly I need to speak to some people first. <laughs>